Welcome to another edition of the Big Head Pot here on the Dub Network. Today is a little bit different. We have always have our sponsor here today, and Herman Marshall, which is good stuff. If you guys saw the other day that they gave me a little early Valentine's present, about 15 or so bottles. I have not been through all of them yet. That would say I have a problem. So I will take my time going through that. But with that said, I'd like to bring on our sponsors here, Mr. Clanny Cord, Eckerd, I'm sorry, yeah, Eckerd, and Ryan Hammer. When you look at their names, so I, I always get it all confused. So these guys are here today <laughs> to help us fill us in a little bit more about whiskey, since there's a lot that goes into whiskey and the laws and where you can buy it, when you can't, why you can't, and everybody wants their hand in it, right? It's, is it ever evolving? Oh, the yeah. whiskey business? I 100%. Mean, uh, and, and I mean, you know, Ryan and I, we, we came into this, this vertical, you know, in the last couple of years when we did the, the brand and uh, asset acquisition and, and just what we've learned. I mean, uh, we, we make the joke that uh, probably our, our best expenditure is our legal team because, 100%. you know, we have, you know, ideas and we throw, and they're like, no, they're like, no. And then every now and again, like, they'll be like, hey, Ryan, that's a good idea. Yeah, run with it. And I'm like, wait a minute. They actually agreed we that we yes we got a that's yes amazing. finally. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we we we've learned a lot, uh, you know, both federal and you know on um, on the state level. So you know, federal, state, but then you also have your local municipalities down the the cities, the county, and then every state's different. So yeah, it's it's been a, a pretty interesting wild ride so far. And I probably overuse it, but drinking from a fire hose has been something for the last two years. That's what's been going on. Mm -hmm. Learning this industry and what, how everything is supposed to go, what everybody expects. So that's, that's been the funnest, the most fun part. So how, I mean, so how did you two even get into to the whiskey? <laughs> I mean, we all drink whiskey. We, sure. you know, there's different mm -hmm. kinds of whiskey, but how did this all come about? Just saying, let's go buy a distillery. I mean, I, mm -hmm. Ryan's filled me in a little bit about how this is, so how did this even come about? It's a, it's actually a really funny story. So, um, you know, I've, I've been in the IT space for about the last uh, 15, 16 years, partnered, and, and Ryan's been doing... I see you the know, correlation, well, wait, too. You, you gotta, you got to say the progression, right? Like oh. Army, oh, deputy, yeah. I see the, pro oh, I see the IT, IT, whiskey, right? and all yeah, this. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, yeah, prior law enforcement, also military, <laughs> and then all of a sudden into IT, and then whiskey. It's like, how Perfect sense. So, basically, I got a call, um, I guess it was... Uh, December, my wife and I had actually sold everything, moved to our farm outside of Canton. We were living in Forney. We closed in December, and I got a call the first part of January from our, our third partner, primary partner, and he was like, hey, you want to buy a whiskey company? And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? He's like, hey, you know, there's a possibility that, and I was already a fan of Herman Marshall. I had it on my bar back, and I'm like, look, you know, I've, I've ran businesses for, you know, 15 plus years. I said, but I'm not a numbers guy. I said, I need a numbers guy that I can trust and have faith in. He's like, well, I know a guy. So, you know, he introduced Ryan and I, and, you know, from day one, you know, first time we met, I think we hated each other. Not really. No, we, we just, we just hit it off. I mean, a hundred percent hit it off. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of the yin and yang, like his strengths are my weaknesses and it just, you know, then we tried to figure it out, and I'll let you kind of say how you got brought oh, my, in from my your story side. Is way shorter because oh, he yeah, called me and 100%. goes, "Hey, do you want to buy a distillery?" I was like, "Yes." He didn't Which even one? know the brand. He's like, I "Absolutely, no <laughs> idea." No, like it was, it, yeah, that's absolutely. Like, why wouldn't you want to go and own a distillery and try to figure it out? And then it just so happened, it was a brand that'd been around since 2010. Yeah. So that made it even that much easier. So yeah. how, what do you say to your wife, though? I, I, Clint just called and said, do you want to buy a distiller? And I just said, yes. So what is, what's your wife think well, about this whole process? Yeah, well, I, mean, I think at Your least wife and my wife are two different things. For, for the, I, don't, I don't think, like, for six months my wife actually thought it was something that we were seriously doing. No, I was going to say the same thing. It was kind of like a, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, They're like, go, oh, buy go have fun during COVID. Yeah. You know, like, stay out of the house. If it keeps you busy and do doesn't disrupt my daily operations, it's a win for her. So I think even a year in, it was still kind of like, Oh, this is really happening. Yeah. Like we're really doing it. And then they would all kind of look at us and go, Oh, y'all are really, y'all are serious. Like this is not just a project side project. I, I, re I remember the day that I came home and I'm like, Hey, I need you to sign some of these documents, you know, that we're closing on. And she's like, Oh, 
so 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 this is real and i'm like well i would talk about this every day and she just thought it was like a, a couple buddies that were bored during covid that were just oh this is a fun project to work on and then it you know not no, something you're just making in at home in your in not your garage type of thing this is a oh yeah well multi-million I, dollar facility you're uh, purchasing yes <laughs> yeah like and, and you know you've had all the conversations but and i'm sure katie uh and you were had the same ones where they're like, okay, honey, you know, sure. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's the, it's the wink thumbs up and kind of go, okay. Yeah. Let me know whenever it's real. Yeah. And then now she's, I know like my wife is up there every Monday or I'm sorry, Friday, Saturday, hanging out, me mm-hmm. talking to people. So it's a real thing. Yeah. No, it, it's been, uh, it's been very interesting. I mean, even our, our friends, I think we're kind of, you know, in family, we're like, okay, yeah, you're, you're buying a whiskey. Hey, company. that's cool. Yeah. Maybe. Like so, it, it didn't come to reality till you know just really recently when we opened the tasting room. So. so you made this 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 the phone call, and what's your first thought saying yes? And once you said yes to wanting to do this, are you out? Are you diving into books and everything else, trying to learn and understand this, or is this just a process of all right, we bought it now, let's figure it out as we go? It, it was it yeah, was a no. lot of books. It was it was looking at the books, looking at historicals, doing our due diligence around like, hey, what's what does it take to own a distillery? How have distilleries done? And then that's whenever you start looking at like those brands, you know, that are out there that were extremely successful around here, like TX, you know, like Balcones in, in Balcones as of recently. But like those brands, like the Texas bourbon world is really starting to boom. I mean, <clears throat> it, where people are thinking it's cool to have a Texas bourbon on your shelves up in the Northeast or the West Coast versus, oh, that's not bourbon because it's not made in Kentucky. Yeah. So it's really that was the biggest kind of eye opening piece when we started looking into it was what does it look like on the financial side but then also what does it look like actually operationally how how can we do this what's the most important thing marketing Mm -hmm. going and grabbing like you know an all-star stud like kevin minch and grabbing him (laughs) on your team you know it's like (laughs) i mean booming sales (laughs) they have not been drinking yet (laughs) (laughs) you know uh, you know (laughs) it may just be carried over from last (laughs) night (laughs) could could be could be whiskey runs in their beta stuff (laughs) Yeah, no, and, and I mean, just to, to add on to what Ryan just said, I mean, it, it was literally, I mean, I, I'll, I'll be the dork. I ordered Dr. Rob Arnold's book, you know, and just immersed myself in, in the culture. And it, it's a huge vertical, but super small. And real Everybody quick, knows everybody. Rob Arnold is the old master distiller. He's the founding master distiller of TX. Yes. So just so. Yeah, okay. sorry. And, yeah, and I, he, he knows the terroir of whiskey and all of that stuff. Whereas and, I'm not a nerd or not nerdy in that sense. Um, I and, and that, and that's one of been, that's been one of the really cool things is, you know, during COVID there were so many shortages, there was glass shortages. There was, and all the local distillers and distilleries really kind of helped each other out. I mean, we, we had some glass rounds that someone needed, you know, I won't name names, but they needed to make, fill their PO. So we're like, Hey, we'll sell them to you at cost. And same thing, you know, the rounds y'all know, other brands that have those same round bottles and we made some calls and they're like oh yeah you know we got half a container we can we'll sell it to you at cost and it was it was that kind of thing or those kind of things that really helped us you know because we spent what a little over a year rebranding and before we even got distribution you know but we wanted to do it right reintroducing a brand you know the juice is phenomenal but rebranding and then putting the marketing piece in you know, we wanted to do it right, so we took our time. But throughout it, you know, I mean, the guys at Iron Root up in Sherman Den, I mean, everybody's just been amazing. Balcona has helped us out. TX, I mean, everybody for the most part's been just really, you know, supportive of, of being local and helping each other out and fighting the Texas bourbon game because, you know, like Ryan said, there's a lot of people across the country that, oh, it's Texas, it, it's not bourbon. It's got to come from Kentucky, you know. And they just don't understand you know, what makes bourbon bourbon. So. Just kind of keeping that the Texans sticking together of helping each other and, and understanding, I guess, though, on the whiskey side of it, that there's enough to go around for everybody. Oh, yeah. Right. No, I mean, so it's it's not just I mean, it's a cutthroat business, I'm sure. But at the same time, it's we're all trying or they're all trying to get to that same 
mountain, climb that same mountaintop, right, and, and do it. But if you can all do it together, you know, the, the better for the distillers and for the, if, you know, for the, for the exactly. cities and counties, wherever they are, um, and even starting in Texas and then, and then going out uh, nationally. It's a true rising tide floats all boats type mm-hmm. of situation. Whenever we have the Texas Whiskey Trail where, you know, hundreds of thousands of people go travel it, you know, it's nothing compared to Kentucky, but there's a lot of people that go travel on this Texas Whiskey Trail. And so it's one of those that, hey, if we can go continue to build an experience where people want to come in from out of state to go and experience a Texas bourbon, then it's, it, it just grabs all the other people. If, you know, if somebody wants Herman Marshall, they might go over to Lockwood or Blackland or TX or Balcones because we're all kind of in that same area, uh, Iron Root, which is up in Denison. So yep. I think there's quite a few that are building in DFW as well as the rest of the state. But that's just, that's just really kind of what we're trying to do is build that experience, something that you can go into that's not just a tasting room and a manufacturing facility. Right. Well, and, you know, it even goes further than that. I mean, I, I have a group from Japan that is waiting. You know, they've reached out and they're like, hey, when are you going to be on the Texas Whiskey Trail? They're planning a whole group to come over and do the full trail, like a two-week. And so it's not just the the out-of-state tourism. I mean, it's it's truly like – an international experience. I mean, obviously, you know, the bigger brands, TX, Balcones, they have international distribution and that's great for everybody that plays in this space. For all and not, and not, whiskey. not just mm-hmm. not, yeah, not just your whiskeys, but you know, your vodkas. I mean, Tito's, I mean, they put, they planted the flag for vodka. I mean, you go to Vegas, to New York, you can get Tito's and there's just, you know, not not saying like riding their coattails, but you know they've they've already you know carved the path. Now it has allowed all of the smaller guys to work together. You know, Balcona is getting to where they they've become. I mean, they started out you know the same way that they all start out. You know, one little pot still and and cooking their whiskey and, and letting it age in in some barrels. I mean, it's it's a process. So. So this tech, the Texas whiskey trail that you talk about is it, you know, explain that to people um, and what it really, I mean, I'm assuming it sounds like it's a, you just on like the old that day riding a horse and bugging, you're just going from town to town trying whiskey type stuff. Is that how it, is that how it's set up? Is that the, is that the thought behind it? Yeah. So it's, it's a little different in the sense that, you know, a, a lot of people try to hit everybody on the trail and some obviously texas is a huge state so going from garrisons down in high to you know gulf coast and houston up to you know us and you know sherman dennison the iron root guys i mean we're so spread out a lot of them had to break it into chunks but it it is exactly what you said they just want to hit that bucket list of hitting all the texas distilleries that are on the trail and it all the local businesses, hotels, I mean, from an economic impact to these smaller communities, I mean, it's phenomenal. It brings a lot of tourism in. Because every place will have a different experience, mm-hmm. whether yeah. that's the type of still, whether that, you know, what's the mash that's coming mm-hmm. in, what's, you know, whenever you go meet with the individual distillers, they all have different personalities. Oh, I mean, yeah. we have two two that are completely different personalities distillers wise and then you go over to tx or you go over to you know blackland like they're all going to have a different both experience that you're there but then also personality of who's talking to you and who's throwing out hey here's here's the real science part of the bourbon and then here's the other marketing side of the bourbon because you know it's it different personalities like different things well and, and the nice thing about texas whiskey is you know and the reason why at least one of my opinions why it's so popular is you can't really replicate the environment here in North Texas. We get the Gulf Coast moisture, you know, the the temperature swings, and that's what the temperature swings is what really pushes the juice in and out of the oak. So you're able to age things a lot faster in Texas climate than you can in Kentucky or Tennessee or, you know, various places. I mean, you can't even replicate that. And, you know, there's there's a little theory that, Basically, in, in especially North Texas, what what's aged in two years would take you know four years in Kentucky just because the climate differences, and so we're able to age things a lot faster and get deeper and richer notes. And you know when you go to different distillers, they're also you know you may not like a weeded bourbon, you know, but you may like a rye you know whiskey or you know a, a, a corn you know heavy corn um, 
you know, mash bill. And so all the, all the different distilleries have different flavor profiles and appeal to different palates. And that's the cool thing about whiskey is, you know, Ryan can like one thing and I wouldn't like, you know, for example, I'm not until we, you know, did our unique finish out on our rye. I didn't drink rye whiskey. It was just too hot and peppery for me. I was more of a bourbon guy. And now, you know, I gravitate to the, to our rye more and more, which is really amazing because it's opened my, you know, palate and, and experience and, and what I like, and it's more diverse. So, so what did you guys drink growing up? I mean, as far as far as the whiskey, was it what was big when you were here as alcohol? Oh, age, are you talking about like college, drink, college yeah, days? Yeah, your college days. Oh, well, let's, <laughs> let's, college. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's just say there was a lot of Jack Daniels drank back in my day <laughs> during my college days. Uh, yeah, it, Jack Daniels and Beam. You know, I and then you know as you. As, at least for me, as I grew out of the, all right, I'm going to just, you know, mix it with Coke and have my Jack and Cokes on a Friday night at a fraternity party, you know, once I got a taste for it, I, I really, you know, realized that, you know, I'm not a big fan of Jack Daniels, you know, that nothing against it. It's, I mean, obviously they're 800 pound gorilla in the room, even though they don't claim to be bourbon, they're bourbon, they follow the same process. But, uh, you know, I, I started gravitating more towards, uh, you know, richer deeper longer age stuff um i mean ryan what about you i mean it's you you just liked it all so <laughs> for the most part i mean you know it's you, you definitely have your ones that you're like i like this or i don't like this and I, I would say probably like eight to ten years ago was probably whenever i started drinking bourbon like and actually enjoying it before that it was you know i mean i whatever cocktails were out that sounded let's, good let, let's you know? see if we can kill this bottle of jack in a night i mean you, you know, know that time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Loved cocktails. Like, those are awesome. Or, like, you know, any anything. Uh, frozen margaritas were still probably one of my favorites after, you know, bourbon. But the bourbons, like, anything that has any finish to it, like a the Angel's Envies, you know, like, that they use, like, the port barrels and they finish. And some of the, those have always historically been some of my favorites. And coincidentally, we're going to start doing some of that because... We like it. it. Yeah, we (laughs) like it. And we get to do what we like. And then hopefully people like that too, you know, but we get to test it out. And, but that's uh, like the dry County over there. That's just one. That's kind of like that everyday sipper. Like Mm -hmm. you, you you can mix it. You can drink it straight. You just, it it doesn't really matter how you like it, but that one fits that mold. Whereas the other two are going to have those more forward uh, taste notes that, that stronger kind of more bourbon club type. Well, and, and I, I go through, and I think everybody that it truly enjoys bourbon feels the same way. They go through cycles of what they're kind of drinking regularly. I mean, obviously, I'm biased. I like my own juice. That's I mean, I already had Herman Marshall in my bar, bar back, you know, before I even got the phone call. You know, but like right now, I'm really into like a Woodford Reserve Double Oak, you know, their the release. Um, that's one of my go-tos. Like, you know, I I had a glass of it last night watching the Super Bowl. And then, you know, I'm I'm making, you know, blackberry smashes for my wife. And then I, you know, transferred back over to the dry county. But, you know, I, I, that's, that's the nice thing is, you know, I'm a big fan of just all bourbons and opening your palate and trying new things. I mean, that's, that's part of the experience and, and kind of the bourbon culture. So. You don't think about it when you were in college. It's just what's on there, you know. Jack, oh, yeah. You went to what's, cheap. what's on sale? <laughs> yeah, what, yeah, what's on, well, yeah. What can we mix with? Right, you said it. All right, we have a we have a couple of gallons of McCormick vodka. How can we make this drinkable? <laughs> yeah, and not knowing, and now you know, starting just trying more and more of this whiskey. I've understood. I, you said I like the rye. Yeah, um, but I haven't mixed the rye or the bourbon with anything. I've have done the uh, the uh, dry high cut, the dry county with with some Sprite, I think one day just to try it. But it's, it, it, I think now that I've started to drink it just straight, it, it, I send 10 to one it more that way than, than mixed. Cause mm-hmm. like you said, you get that flair, but I wouldn't have thought about that when I was younger, but it seems like when no. you were talking about, you started to understand why well, I wanted a little bit deeper, you know, taste yeah. to this one. So you were already in the process of doing, not thinking down the road, you're going to end up buying a distillery. No, I just liked, I just liked whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's so much motivation. I just liked whiskey. And that's, I guess, like you said, that's the beauty of it. It's just, it's kind of like food. It's, a, you know, if you get yeah. a cheeseburger from one place, not the same, but it has, there's like, they add a little bit of flint, whatever it is mm-hmm. to it. Yep. To, to add there's a spin it. on it. Yes. So everybody, so it's one of those, everybody can play in the same sandbox type of thing. And it's, it's interesting, you know, how this is, you know, I can, the, like I said, the flavor of it and what people like, I've you know given it to people and they really like just 
it's a different taste that they're not used to, mm-hmm. right? So it's, and I think that's what gets people to, go, ooh, this kind of, right? This is so, I mean, and, and yeah, this, I mean, and especially like with the rye, I mean, you know, so our little secret and it's pure accident, um, you know, it was one of our first purchase orders that we got on, on for the bourbon. And so we, you know, did our bourbon barrel dump. And, you know, we, what we do is we take everything at cast strength and we take it in five proof increments down to about 90 and selfish motivation, wherever Ryan and I like it best is what that batch is bottled at. So that's what we had done. And, you know, it's a bad day at the office when you're sitting there because you have to sample it all the way down in five proof increments. So somebody's got to do it. Yeah. So, you know, we, we start, it's a, yeah, it's a real rough day at the office. So, you know, we start this about nine 30 in the morning and at like two 30 in the afternoon, We're stone cold sober, of course, you know, so we had this idea. It's like we're looking at these empty bourbon barrels and Ryan goes, hey, what if we took some of our aged rye and finished it out in our, uh, you know, spent bourbon barrels? I'm like, yeah, that's not a good idea. And he's like, "Ah, you want to do it? I'm like, absolutely. Again, we've been sampling all day. So we're like, let's do it. And and that's the kind of like just dumb luck that we fell into because, you know, we I think we did one for like eight weeks and one for 12 weeks the first time. And it's like wow, it took the spice and pepper off the front side. You still get it on the back side, but it also just kind of toned it down a little bit. And now the rye is one of my favorite go-tos, and I didn't drink rye before. And so it was just pure accident. You know, for example, with like Herman Beckley, we kept on as a consultant for, and he still is, um, he came back and he's like, what did you do to my rye? You know, and it's like, well, just try it. And he's like, Oh, that, that's okay. And now every time he comes back, he's like, hey, do uh, you mind if I take a bottle of rye and I'm going to take it back to the hotel and enjoy it? And it's like these two guys that didn't know what they were doing, just, you know, Ryan's idea of, hey, let's throw it in, in there and Still see what around. happens. Yeah, It's kind of like how people cook, right? Sometimes it's let me oh, let's see if this is going to taste good. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's yours. You can figure out what you want to do with it. Um, so how that, when it was started over in the, so the distillery started in Garland, Garland. correct? That's where yep. it was started. Yep. And then what made you guys decide to get out of Garland and move to the great city of Wiley? <laughs> Ryan, I'll let you handle that yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> I, can, I can take that one. Well, first off, you know, Garland, it started, they, that was the original facility. In, in that little, in that warehouse area, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, right we across. Drove, we drove past oh, yeah. numerous times. trying. And to you're like, what in the world between is Between the a rock, rock manufacturer yeah. and a gelled wind window there's a, across. There's a door the, there with a number, and I'm driving to circles, and I even called Ludwig. I said, Luds, I think this is it here. And I looked. <laughs> it didn't have, it had that little door with the, the, yeah, the, b- the bevel the glass. Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no so signage, no nothing. Yeah. That was the original one that they opened up in 2010. They made all of the whiskey and the bourbon and everything back there. And I mean, they even they had everything aging. So I mean, like it was it was a packed warehouse back in the day. Completely packed. And you have so, pictures of it from when you first. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have a, we have a bunch of them, and they had a bunch that were actually hanging up on the wall that we're saving a lot of that stuff is kind of like the memorabilia for mm-hmm. the new distillery that's for coming. the new. But when we went in there, we're like, okay, this is this is cool, you know. But this isn't the experience that we wanted. Right. We wanted that experience to come in that made people want to keep coming back versus that. I got to bottle one time and then I never came back. So, and a a side note too, which is the location and kind of where it was, it wasn't that place that just really screamed like, I want to go do a tasting in Garland, you know, and not nothing against Garland, but just that industrial area. It was the wrong, wrong area. It just didn't fit. And so we started looking, we met with a bunch of different towns, like between like Rockwall, Roy City, Fate. Orny, Coffin. I mean, we went everywhere. I mean, McKinney, we were looking all over the place. Greenville. And really, it, so like there's two folds that two of us out of the three lived in Wiley. Mm-hmm. So we got to talk to the EDC and kind of those those different you know, the different councils and make sure that it was going to be something that they wanted. And at the time, it was definitely just wide open yeah. arms like they wanted us really bad. And mm-hmm. I really wanted a seven minute drive. So I yeah, we, we won't talk about yeah. Commutes. Clint and I like they, like <laughs> they, they, they say I basically live in Louisiana. So yeah. <laughs> Dude, his, yeah. where you are. his hour and a half drive yeah. in. But yeah, you know. I, I, I texted him this morning and I was like five thirty. Like, hey, I'm heading uh, in for the podcast. He's like, really? I'm, I'm still in bed. I'm yeah, like, right. I was like, well, we just got the kids up. Um, but yeah, so it, it's. I mean, I'd love to put it out there, but you know the. Hundred people in uh, around you yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I live fill it up, pretty but. remote. So <laughs> by, by by design, by choice, by the way. So really, <laughs> it was we found a great property that had about two acres, a little over two acres in Wiley, 
And so we just kind of went on with it and started pushing forward. And the whole town, city council, EDC, yeah. everybody's been Everybody. so incredibly welcoming, which was, a, it's always a little worrisome. You never know. You're bringing a big distillery with alcohol, you know, and you don't know how that's going to be accepted. And it's actually been the complete opposite of what we thought. Yeah. You know, it's, it's been like, absolutely, you're going to help the whole city. And so that kind of one thing led to another. We moved out in October, and then the place that we opened up the tasting room became open. Like, Which that was an accident, too. Oh, it totally was. <laughs> it was we got called, and then I went in. I was in Longview with, out at meeting yeah. with some stores. The city called you and said? They said, hey, this, a tenant moved out. There's a space open in downtown. And I go, awesome. Hold it. Do not tell anyone else about it because I want it. But I didn't know. I hadn't seen it. I had no idea what it was. <laughs> like, it's literally, so, <laughs> I, Brian calls me. He's like, you need to be in Wiley now. I'm like, I'm meeting with package stores out in Longview. And he's like, well, like, you know, we have to view it today. I'm like, I trust you. Which you I know. was like, oh, yeah. Well, that, that was, that, and I've learned, you know, like, be very careful about what I say. I trust you with. But I'm like, I trust you 100%. You know, check it out. Let me know. And we'll, we'll. So he called me back. And he's like, this place is awesome. He's like, uh, you really need to come down and look at it. I'm like, well, you know, are you good with it? He's like, absolutely. You know, I'm like, well, hey, you know, sight unseen, let's go with it. And he's like, good, I've already signed the contract. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's I, like, I've already signed the lease. And I'm like, a picture of her like ripping figured, down the lease sign. Yeah, and like everything. literally. And I, like, so. like, I kind of figured that. Like, he was so excited about it. And I'm like, all right, yeah, we're probably in. We did that. That's the other thing is, you know, you just have to make decisions you know, right, wrong, or indifferent, and just run with it. And that's one of the most amazing things about the relationship that, you know, I feel Ryan and I have is because I don't question things that he does. He doesn't, I mean, it's just, boom, we trust each other. And to have that kind of relationship, you know, in the day-to-day -day operations, I mean, I've been involved in a lot of businesses, and that's that's one of the things, like, it's enjoyable to be involved with this. There's, I don't have the worries um, of, Oh, is he making the right decision? He and vice versa. I, I hope so. You know, I, I think. But no, we. I mean, we've just become so close friends that professionally, we we know our strengths and weaknesses. Like I said earlier, so there's things that I'm like, nope, I kick it over to Ryan, and vice versa. He's like, I'm not dealing with that. Kick it over to Clint. And so yeah, but yeah, funny is like, yep, I already signed the lease, and I'm like, yeah, I, I, I gotta figure that out. It's the case. <laughs> so, you, so the distillery in in Garland had how big were the stills? It's a 300 gallon still. That was it. That was in Garland, the one yeah. you originally had. And that we still it. have it. You yep. still have it. That was it, though, right? There was a still and then the other, whatever. I'm, the fermenters. Uh, yes, and, okay. That yeah, was the, it. The, 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 the cooker. Cooker. Yep. So moving to the new facility, the new uh, the new distillery in, in Wiley, how big are the, the stills going to be? So we have that one already set up. Yeah. And then the one that's on its way is 2,200 gallons. Okay. So we went a little bigger, like just like seven times bigger. No big deal. <laughs> And it's still the same style hybrid pot, yeah. but mm -hmm. we needed to get something that we could actually pump out some juice, you know, because it's with Texas bourbon kind of growing the way it is, we need to be able to make, make ours as well as, hey, if somebody else that's around us needs some contract distilling, we can help them out, you know, because we will have a little bit of ex excess capacity, I think, maybe, I don't know, I hope not. But with having both of those stills, that allows us to do our traditional bourbon and whiskey, but then also play around with a few things. Mm -hmm. You know, if we, if we need to bring in vodka, which we have, or, yep. you know, doing the gins, doing the rums, so that our tasting room has the ability to kind of satisfy everyone's palates, because not everybody likes bourbon and whiskey. Uh, but having those two kind of running at the same time is really going to significantly increase our output, but also just our availability of other types of spirits. Yeah. So all these bottles will be able, you'll be able to purchase all these on... At the facility, at the tasting room, as well as the venue, correct? Oh yeah, okay. yeah, a hundred percent. And uh, you know, all the different blend or uh, uh, spirits will be available. And you know, we're doing some fun things. You know, that's like you said. You know, we have two master distillers. One that's like hardcore bourbon, and then the other one that's like, hey, I do these infused gins. And I'm like, I'm not a gin guy. And he's like, well, try this. And then I'm like, wow, I'm a gin guy. Yeah. Like, I, yes. like, it's just amazing. And, and giving them the freedom, because it's, it's truly, it's an art, it's a craft. And giving them the freedom just to, hey, you go play, experiment, be creative, you know, come up with some fun things, you know, unique things that, you know, not everybody's doing. We have the capacity to do both. And that's what we're really excited about at the end of the day.
to the tasting room being open, and you said it was, and it's close enough where you don't have to have two liquor licenses, correct? Yes. It's two, yeah, so it's like TABC, we have two different, but because of our federal license, we're close enough that we have one federal. Yeah. So it's all, it's all a distilling license. Yep. So we were talking about this before we came in. As far as the laws, we talk about, I told you back home in Delaware, Sundays can't buy alcohol. Pennsylvania or Maryland, you can go to. Sure. Texas, you can buy beer, I guess. I don't think we can even buy beer at home. Yeah. Deck, though. I think you've got to go to you've got to go to mm. Maryland or Pennsylvania to buy it. What so what are the are the laws? Are they? You said they go all the way down to the municipalities. Yeah, right. A- abs- absolutely. <coughs> so go ahead. No, I was just going to add. Like so, I mean, like you think about the TABC, which is the Texas alcohol laws, and, you th- and all the different you know states have their own individual laws. Mm-hmm. You know, it, a lot of these laws still go back to way back in the day to oh, where, hey, you need pro- to make pro- sure. Prohibition. Yes. So you need to make sure that you put in type 10 font in the classifieds that you are trying to run a establishment with alcohol. So it's little tiny things like that that you have to go and follow that. Like, I don't know anybody that goes to the classified ads to go and check out much of anything. <laughs> much place. less still, to go and see that. Law. Yeah, yeah, you got to so, run it in like. Three local newspapers for 90 days. And yeah, I mean, and subsequent editions and things like that that you're like, okay, that's still like old school laws that we have to go follow. At the same time, you know, we're trying is to figure out. Is that federal is that a state law? That's state. That's state. Okay. For this, for, yeah, for, for Texas, that's, that's, that's what that okay. is. So the federal, federal is not quite as difficult, but they do a lot more of the background checks and making sure, you know, like all of those, you know, felonies that he has. Like, exactly. Are they were all and, expunged you know, and, yeah. Not there. <laughs> but, you know, so it's like you had to follow all the different rules. And then so any state that we open up in has completely different rules. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like Sundays you were talking about with Delaware, like Sundays, it's like you can't buy until after 11. We can't sell any bottles. We could sell like mixed drinks. But like for our tasting room, we're like, hey, for right now, we're just not going to be open. But knowing all of those laws, which is why we have an alcohol lawyer. That's Mm -hmm. all she does. Which is best money ever spent. Absolutely. Uh, And because we would screw that up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'd probably have already been in like arrested with felonies because you know again it's those things hey we have this idea and they're like no no don't do that. even though it's always a really good idea yeah, fantastic anything that idea, we've ever come but, up with yeah. but we just can't do it i don't know how you guys are able to get around packs <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> well and i mean and going back to the laws you know it's like for example you have like a, a damp city which would be beer and wine or a completely dry city or dry county like I live in a dry county. I have to drive to Kaufman County or Henderson County just to buy my own juice. Uh, But, you know, it also depends on the license. So, for example, our Class D distillers and rectifiers license, uh, we can sell bottles out of our distillery because we fall under county. So it doesn't matter that Wiley technically is dry when it comes to liquor what county is that collin county that's collin county yeah. okay, and so okay. we fall under collin county and it, it and that's i guess that's one of the just weird things that you know it's perfectly legal for us to do that because we're not a bar we're not a you know we're a tasting room you know we're that's it's not a bar because if we dealer. were a bar we'd have to have food yes we'd have, food have food and, we'd fall under a different type of license and one of the things that we we are not allowed to own a bar, restaurant, or any, any store. other type of license. That Ryan, Ryan, Ryan and I, because of the, the the license that we're on, like that's one of the old rules and laws, and you know that goes back, you know, a hundred years that we can't. It's a, so we don't have a package store license. We don't have a, a bar license. It's it's completely separate. So, and that's been one of the things over the last you know couple of years. Ryan and I have just, again, just immersed ourselves in learning, you know, what's legal, what's not, how to do things properly, bringing the food. I've been in the restaurant business, and I told them from day one, I don't, I'll never do that again. I don't want a kitchen. But So, like, with our new facility, you know, at our tasting room downtown, we've partnered with some local businesses downtown with a limited menu. You come in, scan, you know, QR code, and you can get a chopped beef sandwich and a couple street tacos a la carte from two different places. They just bring it over. At the new facility, we're actually going to have full-blown food truck hookups. Uh, So, you know, again, we have the food offering, but we don't have to run a kitchen and have that headache because, it. again, I'll never – I say the restaurant business was rough. This is – 
probably a lot rougher, but it's been a lot more fun. Well, so people were asking me this weekend. They were like, did you ever know you don't a bar? And I was like, first off, it's not a bar. It's a tasting room. Right. You know, oh, give so them you a week, yeah, right? So let's get that straight. Yeah, right. Room. Yeah. But uh, and, and otherwise, it's like, no, never even thought about not that. It was like, by a distiller, you think, hey, production, getting it out, you know, making sure that you're doing your marketing and advertising. But now it's like Friday, Saturdays, we know where we're going to be at, is yep. hanging out at the tasting room, you know, doing sing-alongs to... Like friends in low places, like yep. we were on Saturday night. I sang happy so, birthday to, yeah. <laughs> to a bunch of uh, young ladies. I think they were selling their celebrating their twenty first birthday. They were probably. Uh, I don't don't put any numbers out there. No, You'll they, get in trouble. They, they, they're probably twenty five. M- like. Minch's age and I, but yeah. So if I I was leading happy birthday, and I'm like, what what am I doing? You know, but it was so much fun, and they you know it made their night, and and that's just having. The ability for Ryan and I, you know, we've kind of gotten to the point where we're taking the approach of we want to be there. We want people to know, like, okay, these are the guys that have taken this brand to the next level. And then being able to spend time just sitting down and educating people in the tasting room about whiskey. That's what I think at the end of the day, you know, Monday through Friday, we're, you know, talking to this vendor and and this, you know, negotiating this contract. And then that allows us the ability just to kind of sit back and enjoy the best part of it which is just you know talking whiskey with strangers you know and making an experience and I, I think Ryan has a lot of fun with that too so I mean we try to get our distillers to go up there but those two guys are they're like nope I'm not going nope I'll do a class so we, we're gonna have some classes here yeah. coming up where they're gonna be able to go upstairs teach about it talk about the flavor notes as well as how to make it until the big distillery is open then we'll have the traditional tours but it's the, personality thing. Yeah, those I mean, guys are not into they're like introverts. Hey, oh, cool. They're they're like, yeah. all right, we're gonna take these chemical compounds and, and they they start talking. Ryan and I are like, cool. Which like, I'm not. I, I have I no mean, idea what you're talking about. Between you, you two and myself, <laughs> it's like you two look at a room of a hundred people, go, look, hundred hundred of my best friends are in here. Let's go, you know. Yeah. And I'm kind of like, I don't know. I guess I'll go talk to some people and everything. <laughs> but so I'm happy I have like you guys around me because yeah. y'all can go make best friends and then I'll come in behind and be like, oh, we're friends now. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That's what, yeah, I mean, yeah. those that that first night it opened up. I mean. The amount of people that came through, and, and the people that I've talked to that that live there that are that have gone through Wiley, and they just say it's it's just tremendous the amount of of um, positive feedback you get from the city itself. People, yes, it's something to do. It's just to be able to go do. But like you said, it where, where the tasting room is though, you have the little restaurant, then a bunch of little shops as well. So it's it's kind of a has that old town feel, exactly. right? Because I had never been to Wiley except to, over to the soccer fields, and then when I first came over the first day. As you cross in, I, this is this is pretty neat. It's a little, almost like a little home away from home in here, where you just park and you just walk around and see everything. Well, you always hear like different towns saying historic downtown, what, but historic downtown Wiley. I mean, like this building was built in the early 1900s yeah. that we're in. I mean, like you can find the original brick, and then upstairs you can see where they added new brick. Yeah. So it's a really cool old building that they've really maintained and done a great job maintaining downtown. So anytime that we're promoting, it's like not just about us. Like, yes, come see us, but come to down, historic downtown Wiley. Like, it's actually something fun to go and see. Well, in Wiley Pass, j- just recently, um, I think it was two council sessions ago or meetings ago, um, the Sip and Walk Law. So we have Landon's downtown, us downtown, and then the restaurants that have full bars, and then Echo Brewing, Echo Brewing is actually building right behind us. Um, and so we'll kind of have that trifecta. And so Wiley was, in my opinion, really smart. They're like, hey, we're going to pass a sip and walk law where you can, you know, go and get an old fashioned and my wife can go get a glass of wine and then we can go walk through the boutiques or the Western store and, you know, walk in that five block radius and just make a day out of it. And it's it's been the the feedback and response has just been tremendous and we we've been overwhelmed we did not expect yeah. this kind of response and you know of course the shiny new object you know it's gonna fade but you know if we c- can keep especially all the other downtown merchants when you know they come to us and they're like wow we sold out of food on friday that's never happened it's like that made us feel really good because we're helping the other businesses and for the community it's like oh we don't have to drive to to Frisco or downtown McKinney or, or Dallas, there's things that we can go, you know, do on a Friday or Saturday night and be home in a decent time. You know, I mean, my wife, we're, we're older and we have what's called pumpkin time and it's like nine thirty, ten 10 o'clock. Our eyes are glazing over because, you know, we were early risers, but 
you know, there's people out there that just want to go enjoy a cocktail. And, you know, that's that's the kind of experience that I think we're really trying to bring into downtown Wiley. I've seen the poker nights you guys have had out there yeah. and stuff mm-hmm. and everything. So and then also you're going to have a cigar bar, right? Cigar. Right. Right? Yeah. Cigar yeah. bar built in and to the to the tasting room. And then is that will that carry over to the distillery or are you just going to? So we kind of had to be careful because, you know, oh. uh, outside, yes, but we don't want, we, we don't really want a cigar bar inside because, you know, we produce so much alcohol and obviously alcohol is a flammable substance. So no, really? Yeah. 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 So no, it we, is. Uh, amazing. We, we, we will, we'll have a cigar patio <laughs> at the new facility because, you know, I don't personally <coughs> smoke cigars, but you know, all my other buddies that are you know, big bourbon and whiskey guys, you know, that what pairs perfectly, you know, you got a steak, a cigar and, and some good bourbon. I mean, that's a perfect Friday night. So, mm-hmm. you know, just to wander around town down there on yeah. a Friday and see, and then, um, I never, like I said, I, I've just gone to the distillery or to the tasting room. I haven't gone f- a little bit further to the West of where you are, but mm-hmm. it's, but it seems like, you know, like you said, you can walk through and not have to worry about people's speeding through there and everything else it just yeah. seems like yeah. i mean the fact that you guys had you know i was intrigued by the fact both doors open you could walk in the front or you can walk from the back mm-hmm. kind of like you're passing through like you said almost like you're in college I, we're just going from i'm hungry let's go grab something and we yeah. can take our drinks with us so i mean it's everybody seems like they're winning in wiley with this and it's just going to continue to well and and that was part of the design and i you know got to give credit where credit's due you know uh, you know, <laughs> hold on, that's hold on, a, let me yeah. film this, right? Quick. This yeah, is being recorded, being right? Recorded, so he can reference <laughs> yes. this. That I, but no, uh, you know, when when we were talking about the tasting room, you know, I put on my old restaurant and retail hat and said, okay, we need to have maximize occupancy, chairs, chairs, chairs. We need butts and seats, and they're like, well, we want these kind of sitting sections, and I'm like, we're wasting so much real estate. But then when it all started coming together, I'm like wow, this vibe is just like, you know, going over to your buddy's house and hanging yeah. out and having a drink. And and that is really what it bloomed into. And, you know, a blind squirrel finds a nut every now and again. <laughs> I didn't see the vision at first, but as it came together, like, I'm like, all right, this is, this is awesome. This is kick-ass. We're, we're going we're gonna to roll with it. Well, between me, like, Jason and, I don't like, know a, if I can say an that. interior okay. designer <laughs> yeah. being... You know, we had a, a few different people come in and give their... It, yeah. Just, just the photo i guess it's a photo canvas that we have above the fireplace with johnny cash that we changed into the traditional like flipping the bird right it's holding a whiskey glass so it's like hey that's the vibe that we're going for it's like slightly edgy slightly loungy but you can still bring your kids and your grandparents in and not yeah. be worried about like that's why it's a oh, tasting room right not a bar yeah because you have- exactly well my my dad and my 94 have my 95 year old granddad they come in and they they were like, playing that, dominoes they, they, yeah, they play, <laughs> yeah, dominoes, they playing dominoes on opening night i'm like all right, the real estate, you know, like we're slammed and they're like, well, we're playing dominoes. I'm like, that's exactly what we wanted. You know, someplace that, you know, like Ryan said, I mean, come in, play cards, play dominoes, whatever you want to do. And the the cool part too is like what we're trying to do with keeping everybody involved that's around us, Mm -hmm. like in the city of Wiley. So Landon's Winery has a location right down the street and they've obviously become really good friends. But with our distiller wanting to do some of these finishes, we're getting like four or five of their barrels, like really every month that we're going to be doing some special finishes, special bottles and being able to throw like the intrinsic brewery, which we used to have a temptress with Lakewood. We had a uh, divine with St. Arnold that they ran it through the still. They aged it for a few months or years. In some cases, this intrinsic one is actually four years old mm-hmm. and then we're going to finish it in the Landon's barrel. So we're going to be incorporating two different small businesses around us yeah. into one bottle. And we'll do that release here in a few months. And yeah. so that's our biggest thing. And vice versa. Helping everyone. Yeah. There. Vice versa. I mean, I know Landon's is, is getting some of our spent bourbon barrels yep. to do some, some special finishes on their wine and, you know, being able to have those collaborations and help each other out. It's, it's just honestly a lot of fun and so. keeping it in in wiley you know a lot of yeah. a lot of these the cities that we live in like to keep it right they want to keep, keep it local it, yes keep it the way it, and that's like you said if you can incorporate all of those to be able to and then because you're you're creating that attraction even people from outside of it help because it's even from where we live it's not a bad drive it's all yeah. highway it's at that last yeah. three miles down was 78, 78 yeah. yeah 78 so i mean it's it's a it's an easy drive doing it but and that's just a matter of just you know getting the word out and to be able to 
you know, people are just like, oh, I want to try it. And, and you, we, we had taken going out last week to some bar, yep. some, some bars or restaurants and asked, so that you were talking about, so when you take them to bars, they can't, you can't sell them. What's, what's the rule? Like if you want to take it to a bar, for I think legally, try. like if they haven't bought anything from this distillery from, from Herman Marshall, and really we kind of go back till the very beginning, mm -hmm. But if they haven't bought anything, we can leave a bottle for tasting. They can't yep. sell it or do anything right. like that because it has to have the TABC sticker on it coming from the wholesaler. But going in, doing the tastings, that's been really, really widely welcomed. Mm -hmm. And accept, like, and a lot of people are bringing it in. you know. But right now, like you said, it's getting the word back out there like, hey, it was in 5,000 accounts in Texas before, yep. but let's keep pushing it. Yep. You know, like, so now we got to get it reintroduced back out there, which is what we've been doing and why we mm -hmm. have a bunch of sales guys that, you know, we're continuing to hear things of, hey, we got this big deal or we, we have this cocktail over at Bob's or we have a cocktail over at Wildwood, like all these different cool places that are around here that are bringing us in and having a whole night that's just Herman Marshall. Has the city come to you guys with any any ideas or thoughts of what that you know of saying you know because you guys have been the, the, the tasting room has been open for what a month, like maybe? a little over three weeks. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's, but you know, I mean, because I'm sure yeah. the city council and members have come through. Just oh, hundred percent, right? And just just saying. So I mean, having those interactions, just of just saying, guys, you know, we we're glad you're here and helping this, helping us build this and 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 doing that. So I mean, it's you guys working together directly with them as well, just saying, hey, what else can we do? Or is it just more of a them coming to you? Is it? Oh no, it's it's. I would say it's both. Both. I yeah. mean, they they come to us and they're. I mean, like they'll hold. We have some scheduled workshops, you know, with the EDC, the Economic Development Committee, or they are renting out upstairs and doing events. Um, we're going to them, going like, "Hey, how do we shut down Ballard, which is like our main street, <laughs> because we want to have like a big block party, you know, like yeah. stuff like that." Yeah. You know, we're probably throwing more and more stuff at them, going like, "Hey, how do we do this? How do we start bringing more people in? Because frankly, we need more people to come and see what's going on downtown. Mm -hmm. Because we can only fit a few hundred people in ours right. right now. You know, once we have the big distillery, that'll have another few hundred. But there's so much more going on, and if people can come in, try it, and leave. Um, and then the other side of it is, you know, how do we go out and promote Wiley mm -hmm. as a whole, as well as for us, like, you know, with the Rough Riders, like what we're doing with them, you know, we're, we're going to be the official bourbon and whiskey of the Frisco Rough Riders. We're going to have a bar out there that you can go sit and watch your kids play at the playground because it's right next to it because it's prime location and get a drink and go yeah. hang out. So, yes, Wiley has been absolutely working with us. We're throwing all sorts of crazy ideas at them just to see if, you know, something sticks and then we run it past our legal team <laughs> most of the time no yeah we do sometimes, yeah. Sometimes well, I mean, we if do. it's an event you know and it <laughs> yeah. just kind of fits in there it's just yeah. kind of we we have a couple of our guys that are on the events committee for you know the downtown and so we've become super heavily involved but that brings this out the towns around you as well that want to hey they've got right to be able to the towns that surround wiley are Absolutely. what is it Gar is garland what's the first town that's saxy saxy, saxy. saxy. Okay. Yeah. garland rockwall uh i think wiley is Lebon. technically in like three different counties yeah too, because okay. it's like the rockwall county and then colin and i think one of the other ones border dallas possibly yeah something like that so you should probably know but yeah, we should, probably, we should probably figure that, that out. Yeah. Wow. There you, there's your there's your work for today to figure yeah. out exactly what, what that is. So, I mean, that it, it's amazing how that this has all come about in because you said you bought this in 2020, 2019. We started in 2020. We started in 2020. Finalized it in November of 21. Yeah. Started redistributing redistribution um, last July. Yeah. Through COVID and all this, you guys were able to get to this point of. A lot of blood, sweat, tears. Probably more tears. Lots of tears. Lots of tears. Yeah, just yeah. <laughs> tears. Of whiskey for sure. Uh, yeah. Some days that you're like, wow, what am I doing? And then the next day, it's you know when when you have a ho Brian and I've been there. A hose blows out, and you come home, and you've been soaked from head to toe in mash, which smells fermented wonderful. corn. And yeah, and your <laughs> wife's like stripping the garage. Shirt, your, your yeah, like, on your shirt like you, said you were oh, kids. I, yeah. I actually got pulled over on 20 by uh, a state trooper, and it was after one of the days that like literally we were covered head to toe in, in just funk. <clears throat> and he's like, I roll the window down, and he's like, holy, man, I'm like, 
all right, this is who I am. This is what's going on. And I'm like, if you want me to step out, he's like, no, you stay in your car. <laughs> like, don't, don't, don't get out because that is a horrible smell. And, I, you know, we, we laughed it off. We joked, you know, and he was completely cool about it. And I get home, and then my wife is making me strip in the garage, and she's like, immediately in the washing machine <laughs> yep. so. i bet you that thing smelled like some whiskey for a while too <laughs> oh yeah yeah well i mean and that's that's one of the things i mean there's nothing that has been done that ryan and i haven't done or won't do i mean we've shoveled corn out of silos i mean his kids went and rode in the combines that harvested the corn oh. that we utilize and that's one of the other things it's not just wiley collin county i mean we get our corn out of denton county our uh, barley and rye come from the panhandle outside of Amarillo. So it's all local grains. We're helping farmers and communities, not just in Wiley. So this is, a, I mean, it's all, everything you do, is t- it's all Texas Bay. All that stuff comes straight from here. So you're going back into the economy of the state, of the cities you're in, and the cities you're drawing from. Absolutely. So, it's kinda, so that's kind of how this whole, this whiskey trail is, is kind of built around, is yeah. doing that. It's kind of making one, a smaller community into one bigger one. Mm-hmm. Try, right. Trying to get gotcha. is everything down to our labels that is local Texas. You know, the glass, that's hit and miss, but at least it's U.S.-based. You know, I mean, American-made, Texas, you know, born. I mean, that, that's what we've really tried to capture. I mean, our labels are literally made over in Plano. Yeah. So it's, you know, as local as we can possibly get that's doing professional-type quality using really marketing guys using everybody that lives around us. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Local marketing, uh, firms we've, we, we're not using, you know, some national brand we're using small businesses. We try to incorporate that, you know, we're a small business as well. So we want to help each other out, you know, but if we can incorporate as much local as possible, it's just, it, it feels good being local and knowing that we're trying to do things the right way. And really, we just want that cheers feeling, you know, whenever yeah. everybody, everybody knows your name, whenever you walk into the bar, like, come on, like, that's, that's a lot of fun. That's what we've been doing. Just, just trying to spread the word. People have asked, you know, how to, how to get it, how can, you know, where, cause it's like you said, you're trying to redistribute the redistribution part of it. And I told you I went in specs by me and I went yeah. on there and you were <laughs> like, Oh my, all right, we're going to figure this out because it, it's just a matter of, what, what's the process? Because like you yeah. said, it, it doesn't just go from you to me. It's yeah. got to go. It's got to go. What? There's about eight hands that change, <laughs> that change it before yeah. it seems yeah. like it. So, yeah, you want to describe the three yeah, tier system? Yeah. So, I mean, like for us, you know, we it's it's amazing whenever you walk into a bar or restaurant or anywhere and they say, oh, this is great. I want to bring it in. Awesome. Well, now we have to make sure that our first off, our distributor has enough cases, has everything in the warehouses in Dallas, Fort Worth or Houston or Austin. And then we need to make sure that, okay, it gets to who is the bar or restaurant ordering from called the class B, or it's essentially a liquor store. Right. And so specs is a big one that's out there. And so if you go from favorite, which is our distributor to specs, okay, great. We've checked that box. Now we need to make sure that the restaurant can order it from specs. So there's a bunch of different warehouses and a bunch of different uh, liquor stores that now we have to go and make sure that, okay, that's liquor store over in Keller or that liquor store over in Saxe <clears throat> is carrying our product and has enough to be able to ship it over to that restaurant. So we have, I mean, we literally have a professional babysitter on staff that we is do. just making phone calls, making sure that literally. everything is all connected. It's, you know, I was in over in, uh, I think it was the Hearst area last week and, you know, I stopped in the store and, you know, they, for example, they had the rye in the dry County, but not the, the bourbon, Texas bourbon. And so I talked to the store, you know, the GM, I think it was a goody goody actually. And he's like, Oh, I don't see the skew. And I'm like, okay. So, you know, that's the little things that people don't realize. Like, yeah, it's, it's specs, goody goody, total wine. They're, you know, these massive chain stores, but each store also has to make sure that the SKUs, you know, they have access to them. And so that's been one of the challenging things for us and our team is, you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time, right? So we're literally going out. I mean, I made the example when Ryan called me, I was out trying to make sure our SKUs were cleared for the goody goodies. I, I think Harley's the the shops out in the Longview, but they're owned by goody goody. Make sure that the new SKUs the old SKUs are out of their system. The new SKUs are in so they can actually get it. So then the restaurants can order from those class Bs. So you're so. talking about this, the, the SKU on the back, but don't, doesn't TABC have their own that you said? Like, so they couldn't, this couldn't go to a restaurant. It has to have their, their TABC they got sticker. A sticker on the oh, front. just a sticker. It's mm-hmm. not yeah. a SKU. Okay. But our labels and SKUs have to be approved through 
TABC and ITF. It, it, it's yeah, we got to go through federal, then federal. we go through TABC to make sure that everything on our label is proper and matches what they have. And then whenever we actually distribute it, they're going and checking all of those. And then whenever we add like, so that barcode is basically a SKU, right? Yeah. So like each individual project product. So we send those out and then especially it's been a little bit more difficult. It's not like a brand new product where they can right. just be like, Hey, three new ones, put it out there. We're trying to get those old bottles off the shelf. Yeah. They so have to get the, the old SKUs out. removed from the systems. And that's a whole nother thing. The, the, the bottle buyback. So we've actually had to go out and purchase, you know, from the total wines, from the goody goodies, the leftover old stock to get the new SKUs in. Cause obviously they're, they're like, we're not going to order it when I got, you know, these bottles in these cases, you know, from the which, last, which hadn't been that bad. If you no. think about it, you're like, Hey, but whenever you have 5,000 different accounts and you have a few hundred stores, and even if they had three bottles left, you're like three times a thousand. You're like, that's a lot of bottles that you're buying back. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's still the same good stuff, but same juice. So just relabeling the same bottles. And then the recipes the and the juice, I mean, obviously, you know, like for example, on our Texas bourbon, I mean, the minimum that it's age is four years. Ryan and I, we've been involved in the company with two. So the juice that we've been producing, you know, since we took over, you know, it's not going to be ready for another year or two. And, you know, so we're, we haven't changed the recipes. We, the recipes are processed, everything. We call it Herman's Boot Camp. Ryan, myself, our distillers, I mean, even our sales guys, we all went through the Herman's Boot Camp to learn the process because we, well, the reason why we bought the company, at least me, was I, I was already a fan. I don't want to change the juice, but we needed to, you know, rebrand and, and remarket it, just kind of kind of take it to that next level. So, I mean, that's really what we've done. And You had said that there were some bottles, right? There's some yeah. barrels at the, the original distillery that were, what, eight years that were sitting there? Oh, yeah. We oh, have yeah. a lot that are actually six, seven, eight-year-old barrels that are out there. We're sending... We're sending an eight-year-old barrel actually up to Oklahoma here in the next like week or so. That's a private label. Now this barrel only had I think it was like twenty gallons left in it because it had been sitting there for like eight, eight and a half years. It was it looked like motor oil. Oh yeah. Like I, I oh, think I it was, that was the one that I, I gave you the little sample of. That was like one hundred and forty-five proof. Delicious. That came, it, and it burned like heck. But then after Probably. that. It I was, just didn't want to drink the white, the moonshine looking. Yeah, oh, right. The white yeah. dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want any of that stuff. It just veer off the road. It's about 30. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whenever it's like 160 proof coming off that the sill. That would have taken the paint right off your car. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I may or may not have made the mistake a couple of times. It's just right off the still, getting a little shot glass and getting a little bit of that. And then I remember why I should not do that. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that, going back i mean yeah we have a lot of stock of eight six year i mean that stuff that he sampled with you you know when i think what did it go out at uh about mid we sent it out at 94 because that was the first year that they actually played a round on that golf course oh so we can go. do some like special things like but that the juice but. delicious i mean it pancakes and syrup and the color on it was the, just the nose was amazing beautiful yeah. so those barrels too, when they're when they're done, we, we had the one that you gave yeah. SR Bats and just sitting there and the, sitting in a room like this closed up and it that stuff doesn't leave at all. It's a great smell too. It's oh, almost yeah. it, you know, that, almost like an air fresher type of thing. You can I'm like, can I get a whiskey air fresher type of type of barrel to <laughs> to do that? So it's so will you have the open barrels at the new facility where people can see inside them as far as the tour part of it? Oh you yeah. Know, you can, yeah. I mean we're really excited about when the main facility because there's many a couple different things we're going to do you know the bottle your own experience but then yeah okay part of the process part of the tour you know our master distiller will be walking you through we'll have you know the barrel head off and you can see okay this is a number three char this is a number four char and they explain you know what that does to the juice you know over you know two years four years six years and you know then we'll change out you know you can sample it and you know we may have like on a saturday four or five barrels sitting there and it might be from you know six years down to you know four years or even maybe some two year and you can sample it and oh that's what i like well then you can bottle it right off that barrel and so there's a lot of fun stuff and unique stuff that we're going to be bringing when we get the new facility you know open to the public 
And those are, you were talking about um, the dip, right? Mm. The wax. Yeah. We did it and we talked about it. You, <laughs> you were explaining to us that, uh, was it Makers that has their special that has to be, that's patented? Is that yeah, correct? We, can't, we can't let it drip. No drips. Yeah. yeah. No drips. No drips. And, you know, it's kind of funny about that because when <clears throat> Ryan was a big fan of the wax on all the, the, the bottle tops. And I, I said, absolutely, that is the most labor intensive thing on the planet. And so we were trying to go all with wood stoppers. Well, COVID shortages, we couldn't get the, the matching uh, stoppers for the dry county. And so we were, you know, okay, well, do we cellophane wrap it? That doesn't look real good. And lo and behold, I one day I just got angry and I'm like, went and plugged in, got the wax heated up, dipped the dry county, came back in, said, how's it? And everyone's like, oh, that looks awesome. And I'm like, crap. And he's like, oh, I thought you didn't want to do wax. And I was like, it circled back. But, you know, it, it really, that's the only only bottle that we do it on currently but the wax is going to be incorporated back in more and more with our uh, future brand oh yeah and whenever you come in like we're, we're gonna have the old square bottles mm -hmm. that's like the one we used to have and in, in you know different labels that you can go and actually do your own wax and we have different colors and you know trying to make it a little bit more of a fun experience so people can walk away and be like hey look this is truly a one of one like bottle that mm -hmm. i did that nobody else would ever have yeah, that's the ones that we got when we first came over. Yeah, to dip, the, just to dip them and see, and then you put the the the, uh, the, stamp. Stamp, the stamp on top of it. So yeah, that's people. It's it's just a neat. But they said it's how it of how it's done. I think we double dipped a couple of ours just to see if yeah. we could make it just to see what it would be like. And that, right? that's that's the cool part. I mean, there's not any like rules when it comes to your creativity around there. I mean, we've we've done some red, white, and blue dips, just playing around with it. We did. You know, uh, old you know the old decanter style bottles on some of the single malt we dipped like all the way down you know to the the, the top of where uh, the neck ends. I mean, it you can do whatever you want. We have a few. We have a few like uh, weddings or wedding receptions. Actually, we had a wedding there yeah. last Friday. How was that last week? As far as it looked amazing, awesome. it didn't look like the same place. It was awesome. phenomenal. So they taken the rent out the whole just the upstairs, just, just the, the upstairs. upstairs. But then they can come down and get drinks. And oh then, yeah, yeah, and, and then. We, we timed it to where, you know, the, the wedding ended, the band kicked off downstairs because we had, you know, uh, artists performing Friday night, and it was, like, perfect timing. And, you know, the part of the wedding party stayed around and had some cocktails, and it was it was a ton of fun. I mean, it, it didn't see that coming, but, you know. I thought it was a reception. And then whenever we cut, like, during the oh, week, yeah, they were like, yeah. that, it's yeah. a wedding. And I was like, wait, wait, like white you know aisle runner and everything they're like oh yeah they're getting married there and i was like i you know i was asking him i was like are you he's ordained like <laughs> i perform two weddings do it. so yeah he's like hey you know i'm just gonna offer you up to perform the ceremony it's already in the flyer man yeah, i was like oh that's, that's that. part of it so who yeah. decorate do you guys don't or is that just whoever rents it no out? you don't want us decorating no uh, we, we yeah, but us? katie can do no. it oh, well of course yeah our wives we can sure. do it and be that's why it's just it's just amazing though of where this has already gone in three weeks for people just oh and like, in, in doing some of those like we have a celebration of life coming up in mm -hmm. in April and big Saints fan so we're actually getting the gold you like know, the Saints gold, gold uh, wax made so that they can every single one of them can go and do do a, a dipped bottle so they can take it home as kind of like one of those remembrances. And so kind of getting to do some of that stuff, like, it's special. I'm just excited that we finally have the gold and black because I'm a diehard Saints fan. So I'll be dipping all sorts of bottles you were talking that. that. We had different <laughs> colors. You had, when we were at the old yes. stuff, different yeah. colors of how you can, you know, dip it in there and, and, and go from there. But it's amazing, though, of what, like you said, how far this has come in three weeks. I mean, is it, you guys filling up already with this stuff, people wanting to be in there and oh, writing our, out. Oh, our, well. our calendar's maxed. And, I mean, I... His, uh, Katie Ryan's wife was like, "All right, we need a master calendar." And my wife's like, "Please, please," because you know we have kids. We have we're trying to juggle when soccer practice, so, when baseball, oh, yeah, like all that know, stuff. I mean, yeah. So we're my kids are a little older, but you know, I mean, it's still we have family obligations. So I mean, then when she actually entered everything into the calendar, I'm like, "Okay, so we pretty much." Dear, I'll see you in about six weeks, you know, which I mean, both of our wives are actively involved, but it was like overwhelming for us just already the response and and how just booked up we are. I mean, yeah. every, every night there's something starting to march. So getting to go to the Houston barbecue, or Houston rodeo barbecue competition uh, here in a few weeks. Yep. That'll be a blast. It looks like, I mean, just like I said, what what it's and you guys are waiting, can't wait for the new distillery, which, which should be hopefully 
May, June. May, June. I mean, construction delays, it's it's just been, you know, material delays. You know, it's still, I thought we were kind of past that. Um, but, you know, post-COVID, that's just the world we live in. And sometimes, you know, there's delays and things. So, yeah, we're, we're really hoping May, June. So. Part of it's done? Part of, yeah, oh, yeah, we're about we, halfway. We have phase one done, and phase two is currently under underway. So. Okay. so, yeah, so people can look out to see where it, you know, can they follow, can they follow it on on the website as far as construction and everything uh, else. So no, but we're going to start that now. That's a good idea, man. Well, so, yeah, like, uh, <laughs> I was just, social media is the best yeah. way. Like yeah. we put up uh, That's updates and everything. Yeah. Anything come yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of like on the website, you can kind of go see renderings around like what it will look like uh, in terms of the final product of, Hey, here's where the outdoor stage will be. Here's the outdoor area. Um, here's what the big still in, in that room will look like. So you can see kind of renderings, um, but we're starting to put some updates because it actually looks pretty inside yeah, the first it's, building. It's really like clean, really bright. Along. It's amazing. Okay. So. So I'm looking forward to it. You know, the guys are, I keep telling everybody, so we're going to just have to get a party bus. Come out oh, yeah. and, get up and just come up there just to just to get out, you know, be well, that time right hopefully right before it starts getting hot to be able just to have a nice that yes. evening just to be able to to look out. I still haven't been over there to see it. I mean we just come in, we come into the yeah, and then the we leave, room. but well hey March first, right? March like 1st. I mean y'all be coming over and hanging the, out. The show, right? We're doing figure out a yeah. time to do the show that night. We figure four thirty. Is that what it was? Yep. I think that I think that'll be and you know, going back to uh you know, the whole experience with the new facility, I mean it's it's going to be just shy of 20,000 square feet under roof. Fultation room over there. Uh, you know, Ryan, I haven't talked to you at length about this, but, you know, we're going to put a, a playground in, you oh. know, for, I mean, because we do want it to be a family where the fire pits are already in the in the works, uh, you know, cornhole and then a, a playground. So you can come over with a, a, a family and just enjoy a couple of drinks and enjoy the good weather, listen to some live music. And it's just kind of a come and go feel, and that's what we're really going at. The la- what's the lake that's right there? Levon. Levon. Okay, Lake Levon's just right across. How far are you from the lake? Ten minutes max. max. Okay. Yeah. Depending on which marina you want to go to. But or you just hop close. on two hundred five and go hit Ray Hubbard. So, I mean, it's right there. We're like right in the middle. So, Perfect. like you know, we're, we're both of those end up. Wiley's right there between yeah. both lakes, so you can go have a full day. Come hang out at the distillery, have a food truck, or you know, buy from downtown, and have a good day. So during the week, you guys, what time do you guys open? So four o'clock most days, and then it kind of gets earlier as we get closer to the weekend. Yeah. Okay. So, but I mean, really, by Friday we're open by two. Yeah. Okay. Saturday it's noon to noon or noon to midnight. <laughs> noon, noon to noon. Noon to noon. Yeah. I mean, it that, feels that, like it. It it's feels close. like it. Yeah. I mean, for us, it is noon to noon because we don't is, get out there. Is that is that a city city ordinance as far as? Bars closing at or no, yeah, sorry, sorry yeah, not bars. Midnight. Sorry, not bars. Tasting yeah. room. Tasting room's closing at midnight. At midnight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know sometimes it's two, it just depends. So it's that's a city ordinance then. So yeah. that's what I mean. So you've got to buy, abide by a whole bunch of different ordinances. So Absolutely. And then we always stumble and get slapped and we go, Okay, got it. Yep. That's a new rule or something. Like, maybe yeah, it's an old rule. I don't know. You know, yeah. but everybody knows like we're not trying to do anything crazy. Yeah. But we're just trying to have fun. So, so we're learning. So we're learning. It's just, it is. It's, it's, but like I said, three weeks into it and, and you know, on the up and up. So yes, sir. Get a chance to follow them. Herman Marshall whiskey, right? That's a, on on Instagram. What? Yeah, Herman Marshall on Instagram. Her, Herman Marshall on Facebook too, and then uh, hmwhiskey dot com website. So, Order some merch. Yeah, yeah, we got we got, and we that's one of the other things we we have a constant you know change of our merchandise because quite frankly we. We enjoy wearing it. So, again, selfish motivation, right? We need uniforms for our, you know, all, the winter all of our gear. Team, so. Winter gear now, then you'll have, you know, the tank tops and, and everything else, all right? We do have We leave that to the wives. You, you got your... Katie your, was adamant. You, you, yeah. you, 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 you need your uh, uh, whiskey girl tank. Uh, I'll have to get one. Show v, off I your guns. A, I want a V-neck. A V-neck, V-neck whiskey girl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> V-neck, no <laughs> sleeves. Show off, show off your guns. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. You're a medium? I told you, yes, medium. Medium? <laughs> and I need a visor. The hats do not fit. The, the, hat, the winter hat you gave me? Your, yeah. your head? It started they shoot, fit me fine. It started shooting up. I put it on my head. I decided to give it to the little ones. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, we'll have to get some mench, I mench get, hats. I want to get one of those yacht hats. <laughs> it's like super big. Yeah. Yeah. Right, like yeah. the Three Stooges when they yeah. burn his hat. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I The yacht hat. We'll have to figure that out. We're just going to to get mint size well hats. the big like sombrero yacht hat looking thing that you, you i want to order some of those you could put that sucker perfect on. because if you're out by the you're do you out, have a cowboy hat 
No, I don't have cowboy boots either. Okay. I hate hats. I just hate hats. I don't mind visors because all the heat and just be able to, I'd like to be able to sweat. I just need an HM visor. HM visor. Well, just get us a visor. Great, great, great for completely good. adjustable. Yeah. No, and I'm, we'll I'm, put I'm, some extra links in the back for Minch. <laughs> so. yeah. I'm going to have to tape up the back. I've done that before with electrical <laughs> tape. It's on the last one where it's just screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's okay. I mean, I'm, I'm vertically challenged. So I understand you, you have a hat uh, problem. I have t-shirt issues. So I, most of the time it's, well, we yep. order you your youth your large. Youth, it's youth fine. large, and we're good to go. So. <laughs> That's all right. It's it's fine, right? It, it, you get out there, the sun comes out. You're at the distillery working. You're working hard. That's all it's about. So there it is, right? There it is. Yeah, man. I appreciate you guys coming on today. This was oh. this was fun. I was I just sitting here thinking. I'm like, these guys need to come on just to talk because I don't know about whiskey. I just want to learn and hear. But sure. there's a lot that goes into it. You know, there's a lot. I mean, we didn't even scratch the surface. Oh, I know. So, I mean, thank you so much for just having us down. Oh, absolutely. To, to, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Any, yeah. any time we can start, you know, our week just, you know, talking whiskey, all the rest, you know, we'll just gravitate I mean, it, back to we started the week right. Absolutely. I mean, I really thought we were going to talk about like you know baseball and yeah. the majors and our experiences that, in the in the majors and the minors and stuff. Oh wait, that I thought about uh, that. I was yeah. thinking like wait, Clint was a Division one athlete played. <laughs> Ryan played, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a complete. I figured I wouldn't go down that. that <laughs> yeah, that inter- like, intramural <laughs> sports with my fraternity, which you know, killed it. Uh, those that watch the podcast will know I I was pretty much uh, held to. Uh, on the softball team pitching um, that they didn't let me do anything else. They're like, all right, here's your cocktail. Go out on the mound and just don't hit anybody. So you're not going to so, come play wiffle ball or anything? Oh, a hundred percent. I will. <laughs> you're going to come play some wiffle. So that's all it is. So maybe next time we sit down, we'll be able to go through this and have a few more stories to tell Absolutely. for sure this time. Cause the last time I think we were together, you guys were in a frenzy. It was opening night. So oh, it was crazy. Yeah. Now you're able to, to set it so but, but yeah no, i mean Mitch, thank you so much for having us out oh we keep mean, pushing the word awesome. myself luds harp man we keep pushing it and, and everybody around said so the stuff that you give me i don't always drink it all because people can i try all right here what do you want to try it so oh yeah right, people always ask can i try that one can i try this one absolutely hey you're sure. going for the number one sales guy so <laughs> i mean <laughs> we just have to keep uh the the whiskey flowing to him absolutely so. oh it does when you said I'm, the other I'm, day brought me a box i was like i, th- I thought it was just one I, I, I'm, I'm, sh- I'm sure your wife is like oh great you know, oh yeah she um, took a picture another she, one she's <laughs> already offering it up to trade people come for, for, i think she was wanting to trade jerky for it the other day I'm like, oh. and she's like absolutely just get it out of my house <laughs> yeah kids come home does dad have a problem with whiskey <laughs> just no just be like he has a friend that has a problem and he yeah. just keeps giving me exactly. stuff so. that's what i'm trying See, to do i just blame it on ryan i'm like i don't know I, I just blame it on the booze that's yeah, right yeah. That's, that's all it is so man i appreciate you guys for sure like i said looking forward to this the distillery opening awesome. and uh you guys get a chance to go check out the city of wiley texas and uh the tasting room of herman marshall and all the little the little in- intricacies that this that the city has and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys again next week on the show thank you